The business model you select will determine how much revenue you can generate, how quickly you can scale up, and ultimately how valuable your startup can grow to be. Your business structure is a legal entity for tax and liability purposes, whereas the business model is how you're going to make your money, which is a lot more important. You should only spend a brief amount of time deciding on your business structure, but you should give considerable time to formulating your business model. With a physical products company, there are two broad types of business models, but with subtypes within each. The first type is the most common type that you associate with physical product companies and was likely your first thought on how your business will make money. The model that you most likely envision is the one and done. That means you make a product, sell it for a profit, and then you're done. The customer uses your product, but you don't collect any more money unless you eventually offer them other products they may be interested in. This is in comparison to a recurring business model. With a recurring model, the customer pays up front for the product, but they also pay a recurring fee each month, for example. I cannot stress enough the benefits of finding a way to add recurring revenue to your business model. It's just so much more difficult to succeed and grow a startup that doesn't have any recurring revenue. This is one of the key reasons investors love software startups so much since most software is sold on a recurring basis. 100% of your business revenue won't be recurring, but you should still strive to generate at least a percentage of your revenue on a recurring basis. Recurring income adds stability to your business by improving cash flow, but it also increases the value of your company. If you're making a million dollars in profit on a one and done business model or a million dollars on a recurring business model, every investor will prefer the recurring model. In fact, you'll get a much higher valuation on your company if it has recurring revenue versus generating the same amount of profit from a one and done business model. Investors love predictable revenue, which is exactly what is provided by recurring revenue. So they place a much higher value on your company. In addition to the benefits of having predictable revenue, another commonly overlooked advantage of having recurring revenue is it allows you to maintain an ongoing relationship with your customer. Having a strong relationship with your customers will mean you are less likely to have a competitor jump in and steal your market share. Let's say you've successfully introduced your product, but your sales are following a one and done business model. Now imagine a competitor comes out with a similar product, maybe with a small improvement or a slightly lower price. Then they begin stealing your market share. A competitor can do that when you don't have a relationship with your customers and your market. This happens when your relationship with your customers is short and fast, as is the case with the one and done model. They buy your product one time, then they are usually gone forever. Soon they will forget that you even exist. It's much better to have a recurring model because it creates an ongoing relationship with the customer. Since they're paying you on a monthly basis, perhaps for some type of software license or ongoing service. That builds a much stronger connection between you and your customer, which really lowers the chance of someone being able to come in and undercut your price. A critical aspect of building successful businesses is building protective moats so as to make it much more difficult for competitors to move in on you. One of the best business moats that exist is having ongoing relationships with your customers. Not only can it protect your market share, but it also gives you better insight into the needs of your customers so you can provide them better products and services in the future. With a recurring business model, the initial sale isn't really where you're making your profit. Instead, you're making most of your profit on the back end by charging, say, a monthly fee for your software or for a regular service that goes along with your product. With the recurring model, selling the hardware product isn't the end point, but rather it's just the starting point of your customer relationship. It's expensive and it requires a lot of work to acquire brand new customers. Whether you use paid advertising or organic content marketing, there is always a cost to acquire a new customer. This cost is called the customer acquisition cost, or just CAC for short. It's always much easier to resell to a current customer than it is to acquire a new customer. Now, it varies between industries, but you can expect to pay seven to 10 times more to acquire a new customer versus selling to an existing customer. 
you're much better off retaining existing customers for as long as possible. You don't just generate ongoing revenue from them. You also build loyalty and trust. This in turn makes it easier to sell to them in the future. So when it comes time for them to replace your product or buy additional units, you're going to be top of mind because they still know and trust you. They haven't forgotten about your, your company like they would have with a one and done product purchase. They see your company name on a recurring basis since you have kept the relationship with them going. No matter what business you are running, it's extremely beneficial to know and understand your customers better. This is exactly the case with my Hardware Academy platform where I help guide entrepreneurs and inventors to develop and sell new electronic products. Since it's a monthly subscription service, I've gotten to form long-term relationships with members. In fact, a lot of the members that first joined way back in 2019 are still active. This is not the case with a one and done business model. Another reason so many businesses and investors love recurring revenue is that it helps a lot with cash flow. A hardware business is very cash flow intensive. This is a real problem when you're trying to scale up because you have to pay for your inventory well in advance of getting paid for it by your customers. And that creates a lot of cash flow issues. Having recurring revenue on the back end can really help ease a cash flow problem by generating revenue that's not associated with inventory. You can reinvest profits from your recurring model back into potentially paying for inventory, and that will eliminate or at least drastically reduce any cash flow issues. Recurring income provides stability and allows your growth to, to be predictable. With a one and done model, you start from zero every month. You have to constantly find and sell to new customers, and that creates a lot of stress for founders. With a recurring model, you essentially keep most of your customers from the previous month while you also find new customers. You just keep building up and up like a snowball rolling down a hill. That stability is one of the biggest benefits to a recurring model. With the recurring revenue model, you can fairly accurately forecast how much money you're going to make next month, in three months, or even six months into the future. Your startup's growth becomes very predictable once you know your growth rate and your retention rate. And retention rate is just how many recurring customers are sticking around versus leaving each month. This makes it much easier to plan, strategize, and hire people because you know that you have the money coming in for the next few months. There are different recurring models for, biz for hardware startups. And the first one I'm going to look at is called the hardware as a service model. You're probably used to hearing about software as a service or SaaS for short, but hardware as a service is the most common recurring model for a hardware startup. It typically includes either recurring software licenses or services. Your app or your software will have a monthly fee for licensing, for example, or you could provide extra customer support or hardware replacements in exchange for a recurring service fee. With the hardware as a service model, your profit comes from the recurring side of things instead of from each unit sold. You might even lose money on the initial sale, which doesn't matter if if you're making all of your profit on the recurring software or service that goes along with that hardware product. This gives you a little more wiggle room in terms of your manufacturing costs, since you don't need to make all of your profit from selling the actual hardware unit. Instead, you're making your profit on the back end. You could even sell your hardware at cost or even at a small loss, as long as you understand your customer lifetime value, which depends on how long a recurring customer stays around. Once you have that customer lifetime value data, then you can make better decisions. You will know what type of profit margin or loss is required on your initial hardware sale, knowing that in the long term, your recurring income will be profitable. There are two different ways to do hardware as a service. You can either make the recurring service or software required or optional. If it's required, then a larger percentage of your income will come from the recurring aspect of your business. If you make the recurring model optional, only a percentage of customers that buy the hardware product will sign up for the recurring service. And that's going to push more of the profit requirements onto the hardware product itself. 
Either optional or required recurring services can work well, but it's ideal if your hardware requires a recurring service like a software licensing. That's going to be your best bet for creating stability and predictable growth. The other model for recurring revenue for, hard, for a hardware company is what's called the consumables model. You'll also hear this perhaps called the razor blade model or sometimes the printer cartridge model. Gillette doesn't make money selling the razor itself. They make all of their money selling the razor blades that go with their razors. Because razor blades wear out, they need to be constantly replenished, creating a recurring revenue stream. There's a ton of different ways to set this up, from inkjet printers selling ink replacement cartridges to pet food dispensers that come with the recurring delivery of the pet food. You can make these sales automatic where each month a customer gets, say, for example, 10 new razor blades. The downside with consumables is it adds complexity. It's more complex than the hardware as a service model because, well, physical products are always more complex to deliver. If you are physically selling something that goes with your hardware product, you are now essentially selling two products, the hardware product and a recurring product. If you're selling razor blades or dog food, it will be more complex to scale your business because now you have inventory and cash flow headaches that are always associated with selling physical products. With the consumables model, you also need an efficient distribution system to regularly ship your recurring products to customers. However, either of these recurring business models is better than having a one and done business model. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this video here where I break down all of the costs that go into estimating the manufacturing unit cost for your product so you can therefore calculate your retail sales price and your potential profit margin.